lovely people, and good morning from the traditional Japanese guest house where my mom and I are staying in Kyoto, Japan. It's a beautiful sunny day, and we're going to start our morning by going to brunch at Kura Sushi. This is a Kaiden Sushi or conveyor belt sushi restaurant. So the sushi moves by you on a conveyor belt, and you can pick whatever you want. So it's really a lot of fun. I think this restaurant is particularly fun because here there are two different ways to get the food. On the lower belt, the food moves by slowly and you can pick whatever you want. And on the upper belt, you can actually order specific foods and they will zoom right towards you so you can take them. I'm a vegetarian, so I had some of the cucumber sushi, some egg sushi, and my favorite. Inari sushi, which is rice inside of tofu skin. And we ended the meal with some delicious frozen mango. Now let's get going to our first destination of the day, the number one place where I really want to go in Kyoto. We'll have to take a bus and the subway to get there. If you recall the thumbnail, you might have a guess as to what this destination is. The place I want to go is the Fushimi Inari Shrine, which is one of the most popular attractions in Kyoto, and for good reason. Since it is Golden Week here in Japan, which is a series of national holidays during which travel is very popular, it's going to be crowded near this famous shrine. But we really don't mind slowing down in the crowd and looking into all of the shops on the way to the shrine. The town surrounding the shrine is very lively right now. And we even saw a parade. Pretty soon, we will be entering through the outer gate of the Fushimi Inari Shrine. So exciting! However, we are still pretty far from the actual shrine itself. In Japan, near most of the large shrines and temples, there's usually a shopping street, a very lively street full of souvenir shops and also a lot of food, including small restaurants, lots of street food, and sweet treats as well. And this place is no different. I really like how this area encourages us to slow down and enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. If you were watching closely, you may have noticed that my mom seems to be taking her souvenir shopping pretty seriously. However, besides this cute little statue of a tree, she's not shopping for herself. Ever since she came to Japan just a couple days ago, she's been on a mission to find the perfect souvenirs for everyone back in America, especially my siblings, who were not able to join us here in Japan. Everywhere we go, she has her eye open looking for the right souvenir for my siblings and for other people in her life. I'm 22 years old, and I've found that young adulthood has a way of hardening one's heart. So, whenever I feel like my heart feels a bit too cold, I can just think of my mom, her kindness, her love, her selflessness, and I feel like I can be a little more soft. Can't resist? No! Why are you buying presents for everyone? I can help it! <laughs> so nice! So much fun! <laughs> oh. 
as we keep walking towards the shrine, we are greeted with this food hall, this street lined with all of this street food. Not only does it smell good, it's also really fun to watch. Over here we have okonomiyaki, a Japanese vegetable pancake which is very popular throughout Japan. I've had it a few times at my host mom's restaurant. And over here we have fresh squeezed orange and grapefruit juice served right in the fruit, which of course my mom and I have to try. Alas, we are arriving at the famous Fushimi Inari Shrine, which is dedicated to Inari, the Shinto god of rice, sake, and business prosperity. If you've seen a picture of this shrine, it probably looked something like this. This picture shows the famous gate tunnel, which is the most well-known part of the shrine. However, it is a really large place, and rest assured, we will get to the gate tunnel. However, this is a really beautiful and exciting place to explore, so let's take a look at all of it as we make our way to the gates. Over here, we have a place where for a small fee, you can write a wish, a request to the gods on one of these wooden sticks. Also, here at the Fushimi Inari Shrine, like at most shrines and temples in Japan, you can purchase amulets and talismans, which essentially provide the protection of one or more of the gods to some area of life for a period of a year. They also sell emas, which are these wooden plaques where you can write a wish or a request and you can leave them hanging here. Let's go up these stairs and we will be one step closer to the Tunnel of Gates. We're going inside! So excited to see it! Up we go! <laughs> In Japanese, this tunnel of gates is known as Senban Tori, which translates to thousands of Tori gates. In fact, it is said that there are more than 10,000 Tori gates winding their way up Mount Inari, and walking through them is truly a breathtaking experience like no other. All of these gates were funded by donations, both from individuals and from companies. On the back of every gate, the name of the donor is inscribed in black writing. The donation amount starts at about 400,000 yen, or a little under $3,000 for a smaller gate, and increases with the size of the gate. As we make our way up the mountain, predictably, there are even more souvenirs for sale, including lots more of these talismans and amulets which can provide protection and good fortune. There are lots of really cute ones, including these ones with a fox, a symbol of the shrine, as well as some with pictures of the actual gates, which is so cute. Over here, we have even more emas. 
It's so interesting to read them and to feel connected to the people who came here before us. Let's continue on and take in this beautiful day, this bright weather, and these breathtaking gates. We realized that not only is there the tunnel of gates, but off of this main path, there's a whole lot more to see in the woods. Let's go see what's over here. The gates continue all the way up to the top of the mountain. However, we realized that unfortunately, we don't have time to go to the top of the mountain and do everything else that we want to do today. So in order to see everything that Kyoto has to offer, we're going to head back to the bottom and continue on exploring. But first, look over here. Look at this sign. This says that there are at least 13 cats who live here full time and they are supported by donations. So here I can buy a photo for a hundred yen and contribute to the care of the cats. Let's take a look. Insert 100 into the bamboo. 200. I like this one. This cat takes better photos than me. Look at her yeah, or him. After buying the photos, I actually met one of the cats who apparently lives here at the souvenir stand. Aww. Azuki! Red bean. Red bean. <laughs> that was an amazing experience, and I'm so glad that my mom and I were able to have it. But now, let's continue our adventure in downtown Kyoto. Specifically, I want to take her to the famous Nishiki Market. Let's go! On the way to the market, of course we're going to enjoy this beautiful cloudy day in Kyoto. Spirits are high, the wind is blowing, and I'm so excited to explore this place. Along the way, we came upon this colored contacts store. Colored contacts are pretty popular in Japan because of course they can change the color of someone's eye temporarily, which can be pretty fun. Also, they are usually slightly bigger than the natural iris, which creates the appearance of a larger eye, which is seen as quite cute and desirable. I've never tried them, and I've never tried any kind of contacts because I'm too afraid to touch my eye. However, my mom was interested in trying colored contacts for the first time, so she bought a few pairs.
continuing on towards Nishiki Market, we passed this knife store, which I thought was cool because Japanese knives are quite famous for being such high quality. And finally, here we are at Nishiki Market, another one of the most famous attractions in Kyoto. It's this huge covered market that has lots of shops, most of which are food shops. There's a whole lot of street food, lots of meat and seafood, which is not ideal for a vegetarian like myself. However, it's not just seafood. There's a lot to see here, so let's check it out together. I quickly noticed this raindrop cake because I remember when it went massively viral online. It must have been five or ten years ago now, but I remember really wanting to try it. It was so cool to see it. It's just like this jelly ball that's usually served with some soy sauce and peanuts. There was also a lot of really cute candy, including this candy that looked like sushi. Over here we have taiyaki, which is a waffle in the shape of a fish filled with usually either custard or red bean paste. We have some roasted chestnuts, some cute candies. I tried this little jelly strawberry, which is pretty good. We have some dried fruits and vegetables. And this strawberry dessert, which just looks like a mouth to me. And of course, a lot of street food. Unsurprisingly, some more seafood, including tempura or fried food, which is very popular in Japan. Some more fresh seafood and some matcha flavored warabi mochi, which is a very soft, sort of gelatinous dessert. Eventually, my mom and I decided that we wanted to get some dinner, not just street food, but to have a sit down meal. So we went to this really cozy looking Italian restaurant and it was nice to sit down for a while after walking all day. They had these comfy armchairs and couches instead of regular chairs, which was a nice surprise. We split this vegetable salad with this olive oil and balsamic vinegar dressing. We also got this fried gnocchi with ketchup and I got this beautiful raspberry cocktail. This was my first time having fried gnocchi. They're kind of like french fries, but the texture is more chewy. And then we wanted some pizza, but we couldn't decide on a flavor, so we got half and half. Half of it is margarita pizza, and half of it is honey cheese pizza, but you add your own honey. So of course, I added lots and lots of honey, and it was pretty sweet. Look at that pizza! Both sides look so good. Here is the honey cheese side, super shiny from all of the honey that I added. And over here, here's the margarita pizza. Let's try it. <laughs> it's getting late, but the night is not over yet. We want to go see Kyoto Tower, which has the best view of downtown Kyoto. The line's pretty long, but I think it's going to be worth it. Here's my beautiful Kyoto Tower coin, and finally, here we are, entering the topmost floor of Kyoto Tower. Let's see what the view looks like from up here. It's pretty crowded, but the view is absolutely breathtaking, and the best part is that there are a lot of different standing binoculars that you can use for free. However, I wonder if the people in these nearby apartment buildings know that we can pretty much see into their apartment with these binoculars. It felt kind of creepy. 
Let me show you just how powerful these binoculars are. This down here is a Korean restaurant, if I recall correctly, and it's way down there at the street level. Very powerful, very cool. Here we are. Eventually, we decided to head back down to Earth, and we decided we wanted to get a little treat before the night is over. So let's go to this cute little ice cream shop that specializes in soft serve ice cream parfaits and see what we can get to end the night. I got this delicious caramel corn sundae because I love caramel corn. It also has some caramel sauce on it. And my mom got a delicious Oreo sundae. So good. You like it? <laughs> That's about all for today, but the adventure is far from over. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to see more episodes every week, and please let me know what you thought in the comments down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this video. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful day. Bye!